Okay, well it's 20 to 8 on uh, the 3rd of September. I'm actually not 100% sure which day it is. Uh, I think it's Wednesday. Anyway, I've actually just checked into my room. Um, I was actually supposed to sleep here uh, last night. I did, just not in my room. <laughs> um, yeah, I arrived at uh, just after midnight, after digging myself out of the sand well, for about for about uh, two hours, literally. Uh, I'm still a little bit sore from that, like my hands and my kind of the side of my body because I was sort of lying on the ground digging. Um, anyway, so so um, there, there were t there are two parallel roads, dirt roads, and I took the first one and then uh, I, I hadn't gone too far when I realized it was not the right one, but nevertheless the consequences of that mistake were, were pretty interesting. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, th then, uh, uh, then I came here, which is right next to the Fish River Canyon, and uh, right, so where, I'm, where I am now is, is right beside the Fish River Canyon. Um, there's, there's a viewing point that's approximately. 17 kilometers away, which, which I'll be going to later today. Um, for right now, I'm, I'm going to get some breakfast, and um, and then the idea is really just to relax, maybe get a bit more sleep, and then uh, and then go out a little bit later this afternoon. Okay, well it looks like I've uh, just gotten the shot that I was looking for, which is a solitary hemp's book. That's kind of a, a, a the, um, I guess the anglicized term or the English term is for hemp's book is uh, oryx. Yeah, it's kind of got those long uh, horns. From certain angles it looks like a, uh, a unicorn, I guess, where the, where the, when the, where the horns line up. Anyway, uh, I, I've got to head back, otherwise I'm going to miss breakfast. Um, I may have missed it already. But yeah, I'm pretty glad, uh, pretty happy that I managed to, to, um, to nail that shot. Um, first thing in the morning, um, yeah, after arrival. So, so yeah, job done. So this was early the next morning in Namibia and that was uh, you know, quite something to wake up the next morning uh, and then be in this different landscape and that I guess was part of the gift of driving in the dark and then the next day you kind of in this different world. It really uh, was quite special. I mean I. Um, although I didn't sleep great, I ran out of, uh, ran out across the landscape quite early on and was happily taking photos and um, I don't really agree that, that the photo that I took, um, that I nailed it, um, I was trying to get a photo 
in the same sort of way that Keith Alexander painted his Gemsbok. Um, I did get a, a Gemsbok, obviously, but it, it's not... I wouldn't say that I nailed it. Um, I found a Gemsbok and I photographed it and followed it to some extent. And I actually thought that I would have plenty more opportunities because this was the first day. And, you know, the first day, the first moment I'd seen it. And interestingly... Um, that didn't really happen after that i didn't really see them wandering in the in that sort of complex um after that so th that was my one shot and um it wasn't bad i mean I, I got a shot where you could see it through the window but it certainly wasn't the case of nailing the shot And there's a view of the complex from above, from the sort of hillside above. And on the left there, you can see the little fragment of blue. It's a swimming pool. And that is something quite special in Namibia, where it's just gray and brown and dry. And then you have this swimming pool there. And, and um, that really was the highlight of my trip, spending a lazy afternoon around the pool as it got hotter jumping in drying off reading and but you know but between that or but before that and after that doing a bit of work um going out to photograph and getting it getting a few things done that i needed to get done so i'm not going to talk about going to the canyon in this video i'll talk about it i'll show you the canyon in the next video there were a lot of German tourists and Dutch tourists enjoying the sunshine. Um, I guess as as it was sort of the beginning of the um, winter, and, and that's a pathway just going through the through the landscape. So what I want to show you now are a couple of I want to sort of juxtapose a couple of my photos with the landscapes that Keith Alexander painted and they all um, idiosyncratically Namibia but there's always a, a a little twist to them in this particular image looks like the rocks are almost a living thing that are taking over this house and also that part in to the right looks like something out of Avengers um, Infinity War so all over Namibia, it's just an abundance of rocks and emptiness and the sun and the sky. So that was my little unit. And just to the right, you can see the Gemsbok um, is now retreating. And I sort of pursued him for a little while, just trying to get a good shot of him. And there are so many of these animals in Namibia that the butchers actually have Gemsbok meat in the butcheries, just almost like alongside steak. And people just shoot them for, for their meat. The, they, they're sort of as common as, as sparrows in the area. So I was obviously uh, still hurting a little bit physically from the previous night and um, I uh, right, so according was to still the, moaning uh, about it later on in that day. The guard, he, sorry not the guard, the manager said that there was a guard sleeping there. Well, he, well sorry, he didn't say that, he said there was a guard on duty. So you know, I presume he was sleeping because I did knock on the door at one point when I was in the car the alarm went off. I did drive around a little looking for people awake. I knocked on a couple of doors but I obviously didn't knock and look enough. I, I think if I'd maybe spent five more minutes uh, I probably would have woken the guard up. So a little bit unfortunate but it's over uh, and not really the worst for you. I had a fairly good sleep. The only thing was I uh, got cold got fairly cold and so I turned the car on twice 
to turn on the heater and then uh, and then it was okay. I did have a uh, one really really horrible nightmare and it had something to do with driving and someone crashing into me and and then a friend of mine was lying in the road. Uh, so as you can see I was sort of um, I don't want to say traumatized but I was certainly um, the residue of that event the night before was sort of with me the next day so i think maybe it makes sense to just talk a little bit more about um what happened but let me start with a vehicle okay so that that vehicle is not my vehicle it was uh given to me by mercedes-benz for the trip um and i did eventually write an article not eventually i wrote an article about the vehicle itself that I think went into a car magazine. I, I'm not sure which magazine it was, but I certainly did publish a thing on the vehicle. So, so I got something out of that as well. And part of photojournalism is trying to connect the places and so on that you're going through to stories, to see the opportunities and the narratives um, in these places and in the scenes and, and so on. And I think that plays into true crime as well, is connecting what you are seeing to something beyond that, whether it's the history of a place, whether it's um, something that is going to resonate with people uh, and certainly with a magazine editor. So this is a photo I managed to find of the vehicle. Um, I promise you I'm not going to come back to talking about this. I just think it's probably necessary just to be a bit more detailed about it. We'll go back to the landscapes and the canyon in the, in the episode after this. But um, you can see in this photo uh, a little bit more clearly that um, how kind of deep the, the wheel, especially the rear wheels, are in the sand. Um, at this point, I, I'd actually dug um, quite a lot behind them. And although it looks like soft sand, um, it's not that soft. Uh, I think it looks soft because I'd excavated quite a lot already. And so what you're seeing is, is quite a lot of excavated sand. The aspect to this that, that made it quite scary was I didn't know whether cars were going to be coming down this road so I was a little bit worried that they weren't going to see me because it's a black van kind of in the middle of the road bear in mind this is a Namibia's uh, um, version of a, a highway or main road right and this was this happened probably around 10 or 11 o'clock at night and I've got a black van and the the lights aren't showing down the road that they're showing some other way now, now obviously the I had the lights on but you know if you were kind of um, drifting off to sleep on this dirt road you might not see this car um, and I was worrying about that I was worrying while that while I'm lying under the under the van digging um, something's gonna happen you know, and that was the one thing. The other thing, so I was kind of wor um, worrying that someone would come along. I was also worried that if someone does come along, it could be, um, you know, something could happen in terms of um, an attack on me kind of thing. You know, this is out there in the wilderness and late at night. Um, and then the other thing was, there was a point where I really... Th uh, you know, I would dig for quite a long time, try to move the van, it wouldn't move, dig for a long time, do it again, and I wasn't getting anywhere. And, and then I eventually thought, well, you know, maybe I should just wait for someone to come and rescue me. And then I think I sort of um, thought that that was a good idea. And then, and then I sort of thought, well, how long is that going to take? And... Do I really want to put myself in a position of relying on the, um, you know, graciousness and charity of strangers? And I thought, no, I, I don't really want to do that. And 
as and then it was as a result of that decision that I, um, you know, got got out of the situation that I was in. But it was pretty brutal. It was definitely pr pretty brutal. The positive thing that came out of that was I sort of. I once I complained to the manager, but I sort of said, you know, I'd arranged to stay at your hotel for, I think it was three nights or something, and I've now missed the first night, and he he kind of said, well, I'll, I'll give you another night um, on the house kind of thing, or I can't remember if he wanted to charge me half price or what, but anyway, I ended up staying an extra night because of the night that I'd not quite stayed in the hotel. So what I want to do now is take you back a day or kind of an afternoon and show you a couple of the photos that I took the day before that on the late afternoon and just so that you can see um, I mean I think some of the video I've shown you and some of the photos haven't been that um, you know worth writing home about and so let me show you some of the images that um, that I took so the reason why it was important to photograph the jackal is because Keith Alexander had a couple of um, scenes where you see jackals in the landscape now all of Keith Alexander's uh, art involves Namibian landscapes and that's why it was essential to go to Namibia and I love his art which is also why I think the landscape resonates with me so much because it does have this haunting quality about it so the jackals are one feature uh, these are some images of the um, the from the roadside I love um, taking photos of road signs and also where you see perspective, where you see telephone poles going off into the distance. And um, just even taking photos of roads for me is quite, um, there's something beautiful about a, a, a long road just going, you know, cutting through the countryside. So these are a couple of the images that I took. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit more about my frustration regarding doing all this work and then what ultimately appears in the magazine and what started to um, uh, annoy me as a as a professional photojournalist. So I'll talk to you a little bit more about that um, maybe in the next episode, the episode after this. So if you're interested in that uh, journey through the sort of lens of the photojournalist, um, that'll be episode three. Um, and as I say, we'll go to the Fish River Canyon, show you some of those scenes, and, and I promise you no more <laughs> talk about this, uh, this incident. And uh, yeah, so if you're interested in that, please subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.